Jeff Montgomery here with Accurate Rifles and Restorations. How y'all doing today? Here back on the YouTubes with another riveting, exciting video. This is going to be another combination review slash kind of build video. We're going to be focusing on the products you're seeing here on the, on the bench. Uh, and a little bit of footage of the, of the build process, uh, just to kind of throw that into some bonus footage there for you. So today we've got, as you can see, Falcor Defense. A Falcor Defense bolt action, which we will take out of that case here soon, uh, with another Proof Research carbon fiber barrel. This particular build is going to be 300 PRC. So... Big boy here, big uh, big boy of the PRC family. That's gonna be fit and chambered uh, to this proof research barrel. So, as we always do, let's go ahead and start with the action. Now, Falcor is, I think the only action I've seen that provides this snazzy case here. So, not real sure exactly why, because once the rifle's put together, you know, what, what's a guy gonna do with this? <laughs> He's gonna put it on a shelf or throw it in the basement, forget about it, I don't know. Um, but hey, you know what? Uh, the presentation here on a scale of one to 10 is definitely a 10. <laughs> Uh, some actions you get in, in a brown box with some tape on it. Uh, other ones you get kind of a fancier box with some cut out foam. Well, with Falcor, they are cutting no corners here. Which is, uh, again, I'm not too psyched on it because I mean, what? After this is out of the box and installed in a barrel, this is going to be gone. So <laughs> I don't know. It's plastic. It's kind of a. You know, if you're an environmentally conscious kind of person, might be a turnoff. Uh, personally, I don't really care. <laughs> Doesn't bother me one bit. It's kind of nice to see. So let's go ahead and uh, open that up and see what we got on the inside. Just turn that around. Action inspection card. And a couple stickers. So you got your Falcor sticker there, Flamey O, and a Flamey O by itself. So there you go, we got some stickers and an action inspection card. So this is the model 7 Evan Plus. <laughs> 7 even plus. Or is it just a clever way of saying 7? <laughs> Uh, Y'all know me. I like to pronounce things the way they're spelled, and sometimes that's just not right. Uh, oops. Um, bolt face magnum. And a flaming O again. Kind of a recurring theme there. And then you've just got your the places they inspect. Face of recoil lug to bolt when closed. Initials of, uh, looks like a BG. Main bore diameter on receiver body. Lug ways for bolt to ride on receiver body. Threads on receiver body. Back of bolt lugs to bolt face. Back of bolt lugs to bolt nose. Trigger pin hole diameter. And then the parts included. Uh, we'll get into this as we get through the package here, but uh, you got a sculpt level, trigger pins, ejector, and an extractor. And then it's signed by, not sure if this is JH or BG, but uh, signed, kind of looks like JH. And a handwritten thank you. That's always cool to see. Uh, a little personal touch on things. And our actions go through stringent quality control and evaluation before leaving Falcor. Above are just a few of the key dimensions we check to provide the best experience for the end user. So yeah, that's, uh, that's also pretty cool. You don't see that very often with actions. Um, really, and in fact, I can't think of any action that like this that comes with a quality control sheet like that. That's, that's really nice to see. So it just kind of gives a guy a warm and fuzzy feeling that, you know, there's a human being 
that uh, cares about their product here. It's not just a factory full of robot CNCs going through production and uh, you may have a human being kind of pulling that out of the machine and throwing it in a tumbler or something. I, I don't know. Well, you know, a lot of these expensive actions these days are very, very little human contact on them. So little things like that, that's just kind of, kind of nice to see. So here you got your custom cutout foam for the action and the bolt. Well, I'm sorry, for the receiver and the bolt. Uh, this is your scope leveling device. We'll get into that a little later. And then under there's the trigger pins. You probably can't see that yet, but there's a little baggie with the trigger pins in it. Okay. So we'll uh, start off with the receiver here, like we always do. All right, Valcor. Very nice black nitride finish, I assume. I'll include specifications of the steel and the, the finish. It may be a DLC. Highly doubt it's Cerakote, but uh, I'll get that information posted for you here. Either in the description or a screen screenshot. I'll probably have it scrolling through here as we go. So if my gosh darn camera will focus. Alrighty. Very sleek looking action. Um, always been impressed with Falcor. They very high end looking, feeling, uh, and in terms of working the bolt, and then you know just your just the, the finish, fit and finish on the outside. Always been impressed, and they are certainly not the most expensive ones out there. They actually are a few hundred bucks cheaper than a lot of them out there. So I don't know how they do it, but. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of really nice. You know, I'm a big fan of these guys. I put together, oh, I don't know, maybe five or six of these so far in my my career. And like I said, I'm always impressed when I see them. Always happy to see them. So, so that's really nice. Uh, let's go on the other side here. And we got Kalispell, Montana. Boy, Montana is just getting full of really nice rifle component makers and then you've got your seven even plus uh, I cracked myself up that's clever I, I gotta admit that's pretty clever seven plus what the plus stands for I don't know well uh, like I said I'll put the uh, stats and stuff in the uh, in some kind of text form so you guys can read that I'm sure you can go to the website too if you want all right so Back here, we got a typical Remington 700 style tang. Kind of flattened off, that's exactly like a Remington would be. Um, pretty sure this is gonna be a quarter 28 thread for your uh, front and rear action screws. Uh, and then typical trigger cut out here. And then they've actually provided a ledge here, which helps with the uh, trigger assembly process if you're using the uh, the detachable sear style Remington 700 triggers. <sighs> kind of hard to describe, and I don't know what a guy, you know, if he's putting in, investing this much money into this action and, and rifle, why he'd use a stock trigger. But hey, this basically just keeps the spring and the sear together without flying away on you as you're assembling everything. Another workaround is just put the bolt in there. That's neither here nor there. Um, the trigger is not going to be featured in this video, so don't worry about that. <clears throat> Okay, then obviously the cutout for the bolt handle. So this is a right-handed action. And integral, Picatinny rail, standard Picatinny, integral recoil lug. Uh, I'll get some measurements here before I forget. Recoil looks like about a quarter inch. Well, we're a little bigger than quarter inch. <laughs> we're at some weird number here. So we're at 0.263 on the width of this recoil lug, integral. 0.263 is not a nominal size. <laughs> uh, that's neither fraction nor millimeter nor letter or number, so. 0.263. <laughs> um, okay, fine. 
really no critical dimension here. It's just a thick recoil lug. So, you, hey, they can make it whatever they want, right? Okay, so let's see here. On the sides, we've got gas ejection ports. So, in the rare occasion and the unwanted occasion of a guy blowing a case, <clears throat> meaning rupturing a case, you know, you fire it, boom, it ruptures. The gases are, the, the, the action is designed so that the gases are going to be ejected, so out the side rather than back, back towards the shooter's face and all that stuff. Uh, Falcor has gone a step further with not only providing dual ports, but a very, very clever design where it shoots the gases forward. So that ensures that any gases are going to be vented this way, out. Which is really cool, because that's there's no chance that anything's going to come back to the shooter's face. If you go, you know, say you load up a, a rifle cartridge with pistol powder all the way to the top and cram a bullet in there, well, yeah, you're going to explode the action. So nothing's going to stop that. <laughs> but under normal, you know, you get a little bit slightly hot load and you blow a blow a case, then you're you're to you're totally cool. You know, if you if you load up a 300 wind mag with a power pistol and and shove a bullet on the top, well, you're probably going to completely disintegrate the action and kill yourself and everybody around you because <laughs> it's essentially a bomb. But uh, not many people would be that silly. Okay, all right. Bolt release and stop. This is actually kind of a rare bird too right now. It's getting more and more popular, but uh, vertical, vertical bolt stop rather than your horizontal. I think I have that right. Basically, let's see in there. Really hard to see in there. Uh, from what I understand it, this is a, a stronger design because the forces are going um, on the uh, component there, but also transferring to the receiver wall here, you know, a real thick wall, and that's held in by a, appears to be a hex head uh, set screw of some sort, maybe three thirty seconds. <clears throat> uh, not going to take that out, no real reason to. All you do is put a hex head uh, wrench in there, unscrew it, and then this will pop up. There's a screw, uh, spring under there. Uh, but yeah, so a little bit different take on the side bolt release slash stop. Um, that's going to be reliable for probably the life of this receiver. Okay, <clears throat> and then your pick rail is very unique looking. I don't know if you can point, take, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, normal pick rail style back here, flat. And then in the middle, it looks a little different, right? So if we look at an angled uh, side view, let me get something behind this. So you can see that. Okay, so here it's flat. In the middle here, it's actually angled, which appears to be, I don't know what that angle is without measuring it or checking it. But uh, that's where our scope leveling device comes in. So up here, so where you're mounting your scope, the rings or whatever, you know, no one's gonna mount the rings here in the middle. So that's why it's flat here, but in the middle, it's cut out in such a way that their little leveling tool here will work. And I think a lot of you are probably getting the idea right now. So that angle matches that angle. Right, so you'll get your scope mounted up and almost every scope on the planet has a flat on the bottom. So the idea here is to essentially force your scope level with the, uh, the receiver. Um, kind of a different way of doing it. I would use this personally as a rough start and then do it traditionally with an actual level on different surfaces and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of cool. So, could be a, pro a part of the reason there's a case. You know, hey, you, you got your 
barreled action in a case and a stock and everything, and that's going to be in your big long rifle case. And then in this case, you could you could transport your bolt hand your bolt assembly and your leveling device, maybe some other tools in here or whatever. So hey, maybe that's where the case would come in handy for you. All right, um, the action just very nicely machined. Ejection port here, or sorry, feeding port here. That uh, looks like a BDL style. It doesn't really say one way or the other. This may be included in the specifications. A lot of companies have a specific cutout for BDL, BDL styles or the DBM style uh, magazine feeding devices. In my experiences, uh, DBMs work with almost everything out there, so it really doesn't matter. It's the BDLs that are a little bit more sensitive. They need a little more material here, and you'll see how that's angled. So that's what's telling. That's what's kind of giving me a hunch that this is for a BDL. That being said, a guy could still use a detachable box mag without any issues. And then, kind of a little, I don't know, clearance cut under there. Uh, from the receiver bottom to the recoil lug, which is integral anyway. But uh, that's probably kind of a double, in the event of a bedding job, you'd get kind of essentially a double lock-in sort of feature there. You know, obviously it's gonna be locked in with the bedding surrounding everything one-to-one -one fit here, uh, but also back here, you know, that's another one of those little Kind of little clever, neat little things to see. Just sees, shows they put a lot of thought and effort into this design. Uh, flat, um, kind of here where the screws go in the center. And then a radius portion here. And then another flat. So this is looking like this is eliminating any parallel style surfaces. Like, you know, with a, a completely round receiver, you would have two surfaces that are parallel with each other. Well, in this case, there's really nothing. So a guy, this is kind of advanced bedding stuff, but uh, if you've seen any of my bedding videos, you may have noticed we put, we mask off the, the parallel sides of the lug and the sides of the receiver and all that stuff. I have a hunch that this is eliminating any of that stuff. So again, just a nice attention to detail there. So there'd be no reason to mask anything. And then you could bed this, you could either permanently bed this in with a perfect one-to-one -one fit or have it the removable style with a perfect one-to-one -one fit, right? So pretty cool, pretty cool. Again, uh, always impressed with Falcor. Okay, so I think that's enough for that uh, receiver portion of the review. On to the bolt. Very, very nice bolt. Again, uh, very well machined, impressive. Very, nothing sharp, but yet provides grip uh, with the fluting here that you see. But a uh, very nice beefy bolt knob. Yeah, cleverly colored extractor claw m16 style extractor that uh, has minimal pivoting so you'll basically cut your bolt nose recess to the standard 705 size and have no issues with it uh, working there but the uh, ejector still installed and the uh, extractor uh, but very positive contact there. <coughs> and the uh, ejector is very strong spring. So as you can see, it'll kick out a live round without any issues, as well as a spin case. So this is not their lightweight version. There's nothing skeletonized here. Um, again, the, the weights and the other specifications will be included in there. But... Uh, Very smooth operation. 
there's clearance, a little clearance. I mean, obviously enough clearance that the bolt will uh, function in the field, but not a whole lot of slop there. So you get a little sand and grit in there. This action will still work perfectly. And the uh, nitride or DLC, whatever coating this is, probably provides a kind of an impregnated lubrication system that would help with all that stuff too. All right, so we've got some gas, a couple ports here for the gas to escape. And so uh, when the bolt is in lockup, so that's open when you lock it. So we'll turn it this way. All that gas is pouring out right towards that port on the other side, right? <clears throat> so that lines up perfectly with that. So that means case blows, gas is spewed back. If anything gets inside the bolt, it's gonna be ejected here. And then anything around it, surrounding it, is gonna be ejected on either side. So that's kind of how that works in a nutshell. The uh, ejector here is just held in by a roll pin right there. And the extractor is also held in by a roll pin there. They both appear to be 3.30 seconds roll pins. So a very nice finish on this. Bolt face itself, very smooth, precision machined, as you can see. Um, the bolt handle does not appear to be threaded on. I believe this is all machined out of one piece of steel, as far as I know, and it looks like it is. Pretty impressive how it gets real, real thin there, but it's not so thin that I'd really worry about that breaking. You know, if you took a giant hammer to it, I'm sure it'd break off, but most people aren't that silly. And like I said, there's no seam here. So if this is threaded on, it's uh, it's gonna be real, real tight. So I'm not even gonna attempt to take that off. Uh, again, I don't believe it is removable. And then the firing pin assembly back here uh, is going to be your typical threaded in style. Uh, but I can't use my Obendorf tool because of the, the design of this shroud is a little bit fat and just too stubby to get that around. Uh, so what you do is you'll put padded jaws in your vise and grab the cocking piece here and pull that rearward and then unscrew it because the spring pressure as you unscrew this is going to make it go down into its fired position there in the bolt like that. And no one has enough strength to push that over. And so anyway, you just got to pull that cocky piece back to clear this area and then it will unscrew. Okay, so once you get that removed, the whole assembly just comes right on out. And then you've got your firing pin assembly. Typical Remington 700 style there right down to the threads, cocking piece, everything else, with the exception of the shroud. Okay. Uh, we're looking like a, probably a six to two, yep. One sixteenth inch firing pin. So a reduced firing pin in diameter. That's very nice to see. Uh, same with the hole. Very minimal clearance there. So again, this is going to allow a guy to load his cartridges a little on the hot side and not have any fear of piercing primers and issues like that. You know, I've seen guys bring guns back where it's locked up or it won't work, won't fire. The primer cup in a 072 or larger firing pin, that tiny little piece of uh, brass on the firing pin cup will actually get blown back into the bolt body. And I've seen it where it will get kind of trapped in here between this stuff and it won't fire anymore because it blocks that pin. It's pretty amazing. Um, so you got to get in there with some hooks or, or just sometimes compressed air, you just blow it out. 
but you know, a guy thinks he ruined his bolt, but it's just a tiny little piece of that uh, cup coming in there. <coughs> Excuse me. So that eliminates that <clears throat> or greatly reduces the chance of anything like that happening. You know, again, if you're loading it so hot that it blows, explodes the case, well then you got other problems. All right, uh, we'll get the ejector out real quick. So to get the ejector out, you just take a roll pin punch and uh, just knock it out either way. It's centered there in the, in, the, in the log, so it doesn't matter if it goes that way or that way. So I just put it on the edge of a punch block. There goes the pin. And your copy of a Remington 700 style ejector. And now uh, let me just go ahead and drop that on the floor. So, uh, not quite a copy. This stem is a little short. <clears throat> no big deal there. Remington 700s are usually about the same length as a spring, pretty close to it. So anyway, there's your uh, ejector. And same kind of uh, concept there for the extractor. You just poke that, push that pin right out. And then the ejector, I'm sorry, extractor. You know what, we're here, let's just do it. This one's a little trickier because it's at a weird angle, but. Okay. Yep, so they're both 3 30 seconds pins. <clears throat> and there it is. So there's your little spring. And the pocket, very nicely machined little pocket. That's a typical M16 cut and whatnot. <clears throat> so there's the bolt completely stripped down. Uh, Reinstallation is a reverse, very simple process. Just push the pin, you know, hold the part in, push the pin back in, you're good to go. All right. So we'll put that in a little plastic bag here. So here's your trigger pins. Just standard solid pins there for your trigger. And I'm going to put these components in this bag so I don't lose them. All right, so this, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is gonna be chambered in a 300 PRC. Chambering. As always, I'm gonna take measurements off the action, get the specifications and dimensions, tolerances, and everything for the, for the barrel. Uh, this is a typical Remington 700 style barrel tenon. So, your 1.062 or one and one sixteenths diameter and 16 thread per inch thread pitch is what you're gonna want. And this stub is made to a uh, very precise dimension. So as you can hear, I'm not struggling, but this is certainly not loose. You know, I'm not muting this. There's no rattling, no play really back and forth, but I can still get this thing all the way in by hand. Um, so this just allows me to, to confirm that that's what that thread is without getting in there with pitched, pitch gauges and things like that. That's really difficult to do with an internal thread. Right, so 1.062, major diameter, 16 threads per inch. So all we need to figure out is the length, the tenon length itself, how long that's gotta be in order to capture the bolt nose recess inside the recess of the barrel and have a safe, safe dimension for all that. So we basically just measure from here down to the bolt features, the, the nose, the face, and the lugs, on the back of the lugs. And then do a little bit of math 
<clears throat> to calculate our lengths, our depths, and our diameters. Right, so then the barrel. Typical proof research, carbon fiber, send arrow, barrel. Go this way here. So we got a 308 with a one and eight twist. And this is a 26 inch carbon fiber wrapped. Very beautiful barrels from proof research. So this section here will be turned down to diameter, length, threaded for the 16 threads per inch till the action fits just as good as it did with this. Then we come in, uh, we'll cut the bolt nose recess in the back. Then we'll come in, drill. As we always do, we'll drill out most of the material here. We will precision bore, or uh, we'll use a boring bar, precision boring bar, and clean up the drill hole, and then come in with a reamer. We have a Manson. We have a Manson. Let's see, there's a Manson. Yes, Manson, 300 PRC, live pilot reamer. And as always, I will get, get out my bushing sets and figure out the nominal size of that bore. So here's a 300. As you know, with a 300, a 30 cal, 300 is the nominal size. Well, all barrels differ a little bit. <clears throat> so these bushings come in 0 0.0002 increments, allowing a guy to find within two ten thousandths of an inch the uh, nominal barrel bore size. The uh, couple other little clever tooling we've got here. Um, this is going to be your bolt or your counter bore for the bolt nose. So that cuts a 705 diameter counter bore. Also a live pilot. So whenever we figure out the bore, we'll be using that live, same live pilot on this as, as everything else. Of course, this will be cut before the chamber. And then on the muzzle end, we'll be using uh, the crowning tool. This is a 60 degree 30 cal crowning tool. Just gives us that little 60 degree internal crown that you, uh, you see me do on threaded muzzles. The muzzle will be threaded 5H24. And on this one, it's gonna feature a uh, seamless four port tactical style muzzle brake installation. So we'll get a little bit into that, <clears throat> showing you that not the process so much, but the uh, kind of finished product where you shouldn't be able to see the transition on the, uh, the muzzle end. So this is a uh, Harrell's Precision four port tactical. They call it a tactical style. This is the top and the ports are cut in such a way that the gases <clears throat> are blown out in kind of a 10 degree upward dispersion deal rather than just 90 degrees side to side. So that just, uh, that allows the bore or the muzzle to stay under detonation. It'll, the gases kind of keep that muzzle from flipping up on you. They're very nice from by far the most popular brakes that I've been installing over the years here in these parts. You know, they make other styles, but uh, this one by far is the uh, clear winner. The choice of shooters here, around here. Excellent with uh, recoil reduction and excellent with keeping your muzzle steady on the, out in the field. All right, so that concludes this episode. Uh, the Falcor Defense 7 Plus Long Action, chambered in 300 PRC with Proof Research 26 inch carbon fiber, 8 twist barrel. 8 twist is a little fast. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what this guy's going to be shooting out of this, but uh, hey, that's, uh, that's up to him. <laughs> or her, as it were. 
Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please like the video if you like it. Uh, leave a comment. I'll try to answer any questions here that I may be able to answer. I will also refer you to Falcor Defense's website for additional information on this and their other style actions that they offer. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Um, we're going to be uploading videos once a week at least, maybe sometimes twice, uh, primarily on Sundays. So watch for us early Sunday morning. Uh, usually I got a video up every Sunday morning, either reviews or just uh, gunsmithing work in general. Things I may find interesting or uh, worthy of uh, shooting videos for. So anyway, take care. We'll see you on the next one.